Good morning, folks. We're on pace for my son's sleep regression to have the show start coming out at noon if this keeps up, if I survive it. Anyway, we've got a slick run today, so eyes open as we go to spaceweathernews.com and find the last day on our star. Calm. Quiet. No sunspots and barely even mid-latitude coronal hole signatures. The solar wind never crept any higher, and in fact, purple plasma speed dropping out this morning. We are all quiet in geospace. Meanwhile, the cold snap is testing the records in Australia, and now also across the water in New Zealand. Those temperature fronts do tend to nail both of them when they come through. Meanwhile, it's the opposite story in the United States. Jet stream here showing where the hot cold boundary is, is set to continue, and set to continue driving higher temperatures entering the second half of July here as well. Folks, let's do a double. A 130-foot asteroid swung in between the Earth and the Moon over the weekend, and it wasn't on any lists until after it passed. Certainly an interesting point. But second, this is what so often happens. We don't see the rock coming. It swings by for a near miss of either Earth or the Moon, and then it's added to the official NEO list. Something to remember. Speaking of the Moon, lunar eclipse tonight. Good news is that will be a gorgeous and easily visible display for those in the viewing area. The bad news is the viewing area for the United States doesn't exist. Then again, if you are in Europe, you should have pretty good visibility for this one. We'll swing one story into another here. First, NASA is now making a huge push to find signs of life in lunar material. Not necessarily alive now, but once. This sentiment is mirrored in a charge from two Harvard scientists claiming they have a great chance to find those materials. The first author, Manasvi Lingam, really knows this topic and really should stick to it. You might recall he and I had a mostly one-sided intellectual tiff weeks back, which we won according to the top voice in the world on that matter, and that is a hint for today's little trivia memory bit. In the comment section today, for any newcomers, and to test your memory and comprehension. See if you can post what he said, what we said, the disagreement, and who, where, or how we won the fight. Let's see whose memory is working. Up next, an interesting piece out of the ESA on Gaia and its awkward and difficult maneuvering challenges to stay out of the shadow of Earth or risk critical mission events. This one is linked for you below. We have two top stories today, and the first is a game changer, that is the actual name of the article, on cosmic jets. They discovered a microquasar with corkscrewing jets, helical, vortex, and what is amazing is that they fully comprehend the helical nature and blame precession of the quasar within the system. Never mind that the National Plasma Labs at SLAC and Lawrence Livermore proved it was electric currents modulating magnetic fields, which would have no choice but to work in those vortex helical corkscrews. I guess they didn't want to make their jobs look too easy. Last but not least, solar physics with a total geek out piece for those interested in the heliospheric plasma current sheet. FYI, that would be for anyone who cares about plasma cosmology, space weather effects on Earth, the interplanetary magnetic fields that trigger earthquakes or the galactic version of that sheet, which triggers the cyclical catastrophic solar outburst and minor to moderate extinction event on Earth. That's another of the infomentary movies coming out right here next month. Subscribe. Stick around. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 4.55 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.